Hey everybody, John here from the Crafting Brothers. Today, I'm out in the backyard here looking for some rocks. Why am I looking for rocks in my backyard? Because I'm gonna be making liquid latex molds out of the rocks that I find. So I'm gonna hopefully find something interesting enough uh, to bring back into the shop and cast. So let's take a look and see what we can find. All right, so we've got a nice little area of landscaping here and there, as you can see, there are a bunch of rocks that we've just found randomly and used in the landscaping. And I've already pulled some aside here. So these are the rocks I've decided that I'm going to be casting. And uh, I decided to just pick some random edges here and see how, they, how those casts turn out. I picked out another rock that had an interesting shape to it, so I'm gonna give that a try. Next, I've got just a little small section here. This looks kind of like a cliff face. So I'm gonna give that a shot and see how that turns out. And then finally, I'm gonna make one big long piece out of this side of the stone right here. So I'm gonna bring these into the garage and uh, let's start making molds. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, now that we've selected the rocks that we want to use, I'm going to uh, clean off the surface first, and then we're going to apply the liquid latex over the area that we want to cast. Now this particular liquid latex would be the same stuff that you use for Halloween if you're putting on a bald cap or doing some makeup. It's a water-based liquid latex and we're going to end up going over this with about three to five coats, most likely five coats, uh, so that it's thick enough to peel off and, and create the mold. I ended up applying about five coats of the liquid latex here and now I'm ready to go ahead and peel off the molds. So what you want to do is just carefully lift the edges from the side of the rock and just peel slowly making sure not to rip it. You definitely don't want to rip your mold. Now what you're going to end up with here are some fragments of the rock that stick to the latex but that's okay just go in and pick them out they should come out relatively easy and uh, your mold should be ready to go Okay, so the next step here is to lay the molds down into a bed of dirt or sand. And the reason we're doing this is to hold the shape of the mold while we pour the plaster inside the molds. Now when you're mixing the plaster, make sure that you end up with a consistency like, let's say, a McDonald's milkshake, and then you'll be ready to go ahead and pour that into the molds. After about 30 minutes or so, your mold should be set. So all you have to do is just peel back the latex and the mold should pop out relatively easily. And you've got a nice mold of the original rock. Okay, now it's time to reveal the underlying project here, which we're using the stone creations for. What I'm going to be doing is creating a two-part mountain terrain structure, which is going to be modular for your game. And the plan is to have these two mountain structures side by side, and then we'll have a suspension bridge connecting the two of them together. So I'll be cutting out six different platform pieces and stacking them on top of each other in order to create the two separate mountain terrain pieces. Next, it's time to unmold the plaster rock pieces from the latex, and what we're gonna do is start figuring out how we're going to apply these to our mountain terrain structure. 
I'm applying spray adhesive here to stick all the pieces together and this should hold them together while I'm working on the molded plaster pieces. I'm using a handheld hot wire cutter to shape the foam so that I can attach the rock pieces. I'm also using my utility knife to just give the side of the cliff a little bit of an angle. I've had to make some adjustments including putting some extra pieces of foam on here and then just trimming the side of the cliff here so that I can put the rocks on. This part's going to be sort of a jigsaw puzzle because we're going to be shaving foam, we're going to be adding foam pieces, and we're going to be shaving off some of the plaster to get these pieces to fit together. Having this handheld hot wire cutter really helps to shape the foam so I can get these rock faces on. Now that all of the pieces have been glued on, I'm ready to start shaping the rest of my foam with the hot wire cutter. Okay, next we are going to make sculpt mold out of single ply toilet paper. If all you have is two ply, that's fine, it'll work. This just breaks apart a lot easier. So uh, we're going to fill, not fill, but we're going to put a good amount of this toilet paper in a bucket and then we're gonna get some water and we're gonna break it up. So after adding my toilet paper to the bucket, I'm just gonna pour some water in here and you can do this by hand, but I just happen to have this mixer handy that goes in my drill, so I'm gonna use that. And uh, we're just gonna macerate this toilet paper until it's to the consistency of like oatmeal. Uh, and so I'm gonna add water here and then I'm gonna add my plaster until I come up with a really thick pancake-like mixture. Now that I've got the right consistency, it's gonna be easy to just spread this over the top of my terrain piece here and just mold it into the shape that I want to. What I'm gonna do is have sort of a ramp or a pathway going up from the bottom to the top and maybe some steps I'm gonna put in here as well and we'll see how that works out. Once I'm finished with the top of the terrain piece, I'm going to go back with my sculpt mold here and just fill all of the little cracks or areas in between the rocks. This should help the final piece look pretty seamless when I'm ready to paint. I 
I've got a variety of different painting methods that I could use here, but what I've decided on is to go with a watered down granite gray to start. The reason why I'm watering down the paint is because this plaster is going to soak it up, so I don't want to use the paint right out of the bottle. Looking at these granite slabs here, these steps, I'm just not sure that I'm going to leave these in here because realistically they are just not the right scale, so I'll probably end up removing these. I'm using a watered down golden straw color on some of the rock faces and this will actually be toned down later after the black wash is applied. Next I'm using a watered down light brown and I'm just going to blend this in with the yellow. Now I'm using my black wash here to highlight some of the cracks in between the rock surfaces and it should add an extra layer of depth before the final black wash is done. Now a black wash is applied to the entire surface of the rock face here and after that's done we're going to finish it with a dry brushing of white which will highlight all the edges of the rocks. I'm going to prep the top of this terrain piece with a coat of brown paint. All of the finishing touches will be applied later on. Dry brushing is one of my favorite techniques here and it really finishes off the piece by making the rocks pop out. Again, this is a white dry brush and you wanna make sure to remove most of the paint from the brush before you start this process. You can put the paint on, but you can't take it off. So just be careful here. Thanks for watching part one of this build. Next week, I'll be adding a lot of elements to the final terrain piece, which include flocking, static grass application, and multiple variations of ground cover. Please feel free to send me any comments on this video, and of course, subscribe if you like the content on our channel, and we'll see you next week.